What's going on, everybody? I am back to break down this two-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Only a two-gamer. Not exactly the biggest slate in the world, but we're going to get into it. Dissecting the top plays, figuring out some game strategy, as always. Talking about some uh, strategy and, you know, priorities that I would be prioritizing on a two-game slate, such as a Stars and Scrubs build, getting some top scoring guys in your lineups. Um, and if anything, you know, ceiling becomes a little bit less relevant on a two-game slate. It can become really relevant if someone blows out the entire slate, but overall, we're looking for a little bit more raw scoring than we typically would be, uh, as opposed to finding those guys that can outperform their salary. So, we're going to talk about it. Before we do, quick reminder, guys, if you feel like I provide you with any value, if you feel like you enjoy this content, it's entertaining, all of the above, if you could take one second to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload, that would be greatly appreciated. And check out the sponsor of the program, Super Draft, guys. If you haven't checked out Super Draft, check them out. As you can see on the screen for myself tonight, I have three free entries in contests, including one with $500 in prizes, $250 in prizes, and $100 in prizes. And how did I do that? Well, I signed up for Super Draft Pro. You can do so by using my link down below in the description. And when you do, you'll be put to the screen. You can hit Access Free Contest. When you do, you sign up for your Super Pass. The Super Pass includes all of this fun stuff. You can get the Free and fun, basic, premium, elite, obviously the best package that you get, the more that they offer. The best value is the elite package. That's what I have. You get access to the exclusive DFS and sports betting pick them and player props contest. Elite member only contest, as you can see on my lobby. The two times multiplier on SD Sportsbook. Weekly tournament winnings, five times multiplier on the SD Sportsbook. And you can redeem Supercoin in the Superstore for huge prizes. That has all sorts of fun stuff like trips to Vegas, uh, golf trips, all that fun stuff. You can win tickets. There was tickets to be... Won to the Pro Bowl the other day. I was in, I was a uh, close to winning those at, at first, and then Gabe Davis just went off. So, uh, but anyways, guys, when you sign up, you can get into these contests. You also can become a coach. You click that you submit that you referred by me. That's the only way you can access these exclusive contests. You could become a coach as well as a player. The player is going to give you access to all those contests. But if you want to become a coach for only a small forty dollar fee, yeah, annually, you can get your own referral link. You can refer people and create your own home-based business, such as I'm doing right now. When you refer people, you get a commission. I'm sure you've seen many people, many YouTubers say, you know, use the link in my bio, and they're all getting money off you as far as running their own business. But it's time for you to run your own business as a viewer. Get that coach pass. Continue as a coach. Sign up, and you'll get that a link that you can share with your friends. You can start making commissions yourself. So a really cool thing that they have going over there on Superdraft. And I uh, just wanted to talk about the sponsor of the program before we get into it. Let's talk about it. It's only a two-gamer. It shouldn't take too, too long to do here, but we'll talk about some game theory, all that stuff. As far as injury news, in this first game, we had the LA Lakers taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. This game comes in with a 218 over-under, is the lowest total of the two games, with a two-and-a-half-point spread in favor of the Philadelphia 76ers. But with that being said, the Sixers are stealing, still dealing with some injuries, most notably Seth Curry is continuing to be out. Shake Milton is continuing to be out. With that being said, obviously there's going to be some bumps up Two certain guys in the rotation. We saw Matisse Thibel return last time out, and Danny Green is listed as questionable. Um, if Danny Green is listed as questionable, that could certainly cut into, you know, Furkan Korkmaz, Charlie Brown, and Isaiah Joe minutes. I would say for the most part, Charlie Brown and Isaiah Joe are going to get their minutes cut down. Furkan Korkmaz probably still gets quite a bit of minutes, and we see Danny Green step back into a decent uh, role here overall. But for me, on the Philadelphia side, it's pretty simple who we're going to be going to. It's the starters that are getting the most minutes and the pay-up options. So who are those people? Well, for one, it's going to be Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, as well as Tobias Harris. Those three are really the big three. Tyrese Maxey getting a lot of minutes, a lot of usage, with there being no Seth Curry. Playing 35-plus minutes in every single game. 6-4 as far as his per-minute production on the season. Looking at what he's been putting up on the season, he's putting up 0.85 DK points per minute. So a really good fantasy point producer. And priced very reasonably. So Tyrese Maxey makes a lot of sense. Joel Embiid is a payup option with there being no uh, Ben Simmons on the season. You know, we've really seen his usage really stand out. He's put up 77, 67, 65, and 73 DraftKings points as of late. Been an absolute beast. And for that reason, he is one of my top priority payup options on this slate tonight. Really going to like him. And then, of course, Tobias Harris at 7-3 we talked about. Another building block. Uh, 57 DraftKings points last time out. Once again, the usage has been high. He's been really struggling shooting on the season. Last time out, we finally saw him have a good shooting game, and you see the results. 57 DraftKings points. His prices come down a little bit to 7.3 as well. So certainly willing to go there. 
And then rounding things out, it's for Ken Cork Mats, it's Matisse Thibel, and it's George Schnang. As far as the other guys you're looking to get exposure to, Matisse Thibel at 3.6, a very cheap price tag. Furkan Korkmaz at 4.8, continuing to see a lot of minutes. A really good shooter when he does get hot, can put up some big points in a hurry. And as far as anyone else, like I said, a George Schnang, I think could be an interesting option in your tournament lineups. If there is no Danny Green, if Danny Green comes back, he's still an interesting option, but it becomes not quite as entertaining as it would be if there is indeed no Danny Green. So... That's where I'd be looking to on the Philadelphia side, running it back on the LA Lakers side. Once again, uh, there is a sort of big three to talk about. Obviously, the big three in the LA Lakers. It's LeBron James. It's Anthony Davis. It's Russell Westbrook. Uh, with Anthony Davis being back, I do think that that really hurts Russell Westbrook and LeBron James' upside. However, on only a two-game slate, once again, we need uh, minutes. We need, you know... A floor, essentially. We need raw points is what I'm trying to say here. We need raw points because even though if these guys don't reach their ceiling, if they're the top scorers on the slate, you might still need them to come in first in these tournaments. It's just the way these two-game slates work. So Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, certainly all going to be viable. Anthony Davis is still expected to be on a minutes limit. Saw him play 25 minutes last time out. So he would be the first one that I'm willing to fade here just based upon the minutes alone. However, if that's going to keep his ownership low, on a two-game slate, it's certainly a spot where you could be taking a risk on a guy like this that's on a minutes limit because it's only a two-gamer. We know he could go out there and put up, you know, he could realistically, if he gets up in the high 20s in minutes, go out there and put up 50 drafting points. Uh, obviously, he's going to have to be very efficient. The likelihood isn't very high, but with the skill that Anthony Davis possesses in the permanent production, it is possible. So um, not getting too, too intrigued to play him there, but uh, he is someone that could, could be looking to here. Uh, as a low on tournament play. But for the most part, we're looking at Joel Embiid. We're looking to Russell Westbrook. We're looking to LeBron James as pay-up options in this game. Uh, my favorite of the pay-up options on the Lakers side will be LeBron James. It's LeBron James. It's Joel Embiid for me as pay-up options in this game. And as far as anyone else, I think Malik Monk's the next guy you could be looking to at a 4-5 price tag here. Consistently playing in the mid to upper 20s is a good fantasy point producer. He comes off the bench and gets all of that usage uh, with the second unit. So I think he's an interesting option. Carmelo Anthony could be an interesting option, and I also think you could be like taking a look to an Austin Reeves and a Taylor Horton Tucker on a two-game slate. Typically, these are guys I wouldn't even bat an eye at on a bigger game, on a you know larger slate. But we have seen Austin Reeves playing in the mid-20s minutes off the bench at times. You know that's enough to get it done in tournaments for you. Malik Monk, uh, like I said, a Taylor Horton Tucker, and lastly, the guy that I'd be looking to that I wouldn't sleep on is a Stanley Johnson at only a 3-3 price tag. Once again, on only a two-game slate, has been getting a decent allotment of minutes. Last time out, we saw him get 29 minutes. Um, he signed a two-year contract with the Lakers. You know, they're clearly all in on him, so... You know, Stanley Johnson getting the start, it's less than ideal, but it's a two-game slate. You can't really be ideal on a two-game slate. And at a 3-3 price tag, if he goes out there and he's able to put up some some sort of a performance, like we saw him put up against Orlando where he put up 24 drafting points on a two-game slate, that could be really, really big for you. So would be willing to go there. Second game on the slate, we have Minnesota taking on the Golden State Warriors. Biggest piece of news in this one is Patrick Beverly, Jalen Noel. Both those guys are listed as questionable. Um, and... He Apparently, I mean, Jalen Noel hasn't been on, listed on the injury report, so the fact that he is 10, that kind of makes me think that he's going to be out. Patrick Beverly has been listed on the injury report for quite some time, and he's been close to returning, so I tend to think that he's probably going to be back. So I'm guessing that Patrick Beverly is in, Jalen Noel is out. If there is indeed no Jalen Noel, that should be uh, more minutes, more usage to go to a Malik Beasley. So I think Malik Beasley becomes an interesting tournament option at only a 3-6 price tag in this one, typically playing around like 20 minutes if he's able to get up to like 25 um, at some lower ownership, he could really pay off for you in your tournament lineup. So I like him for sure. But the top options for me in this game, hands down, not even close, are going to be the uh, the mid-range options on the Timberwolves side. And um, who are those options that are getting a lot of minutes in the mid-range? Well, first of all, Carnthy Towns. Let's just talk about them all. Carnthy Towns, Anthony Edwards, DeAndre Russell, and Jared Vanderbilt. Those four guys are the ones that are getting the most consistent minutes in these rotations. Those four guys are the ones I'm really wanting to lock in on here. We've seen Vanderbilt really rack up a lot of rebounds, 33, 33, 44 DraftKings points as of late, doing a phenomenal job on the glass. So I like targeting him from a rebounding aspect. Carnthy Towns really has not touched his ceiling as of late. He only shot seven times last time out and put up 50 DraftKings points. So you can imagine maybe if he took a few more shots, the upside would be there even further. 
at 9-2, maybe he's an interesting pivot off from a uh, Joel Embiid at 11-4 where you get a slight discount. If Embiid only goes out there and puts up, you know, like let's say 55 DraftKings points and Carl Anthony Towns is able to match that, that extra salary that you get to pay up for some certain options in your lineups is going to go a long way for you. So I don't hate that strategy. Uh, but Anthony Edwards and DeAndre Russell are going to be really, really big priorities for me on the slate. 8-1 for Anthony Edwards. 7-5 DeAndre Russell. I just think they continue to be priced very reasonably for these upside uh, they're upside. Both these guys capable of putting up 50 DraftKings points every single time out, and they're not priced up in the 9K range yet, like a Carl Anthony Town. So I'm going to be loading up on them. A Vanderbilt, who I talked about. And then as far as the secondary options, if Patrick Beverly's in, he really does grade out as a great play for me at only a 4-2 price tag. Once again, I'm expecting him to be in. I also really do like Jalen Noel at 4K, uh, putting up 1.08 DK points per minute if he's in. I just don't think he's going to be in, but maybe putting him in your lineups and then being able to late swap onto like um and Malik Beasley isn't a terrible idea they both do have shooting guard eligibility so I wouldn't hate doing that uh but yeah it's Carl Anthony Towns it's DeAndre Russell it's Patrick Beverly it's Jared Vanderbilt it's Anthony Edwards and uh those are your top options on this Minnesota side followed up by a Malik Beasley as far as anyone else I'd be looking to on the Minnesota side if you want to go to some punt plays that are a little bit cheaper that are risky in your tournament lineups it's Jaden McDaniels it's Nas Reed and it's Torian Prince for me but um, once again, these guys aren't really big priorities for me. I mean, Jaden McDaniels got the start last time with no Malik Beasley. If Malik Beasley's back, he's probably going to get some minutes cut down. 3-4. Decent play. Nas Reed at 3-2 is a very good fantasy point producer. We've seen him play anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes. Maybe if Carl Anthony Towns gets in foul trouble or something at a 3-2 price tag, it could pay off for you. Not ideal, but it's possible. And lastly, Torian Prince um, at a 3-1 price tag. He's very cheap. He's been getting a lot of minutes as of late. 20 plus minutes in the last three games. Uh, that's probably going to change with a um, Patrick Beverly being back. But if Jalen Noel is out, maybe that's enough to give him those minutes once again at this 3-1 price tag. That's very, very cheap. So it's worth taking some risks on your tournament lineups. I don't hate it. It's not like it's going to be a top priority for me. And then running things back on the Golden State Warrior side, it's obvious. In the fastest up pace game here. Seth, I mean, Stephen Curry definitely has a lot of upside, obviously, at a 10-3 price tag. Just a matter of, are you willing to pay that price tag in comparison to our other pay-up options? You know, we have Joel Embiid, we have LeBron James, um, we have D'Lo, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns. I would say Seth, Stephen Curry is the biggest hit or miss out of those. It's just the Warriors are completely healthy, and Steph isn't exactly always going into the takeover mode here. But being that the game is expected to stay close, it's only a six-point spread in favor of Golden State. That's a big thing for these Warriors that have been blowing up quite a bit of teams in the season. So I do think that Stephen Curry certainly is a decent option here. Clay Thompson at 5-3 is pretty intriguing for me. Andrew Wiggins at 5-7 uh, is pretty intriguing for me. If you're fading Stephen Curry, I think it does make some sense to get some exposure to these guys in the mid-range because chances are they're going to be having pretty decent games if Stephen doesn't, you know, have the biggest game in the world. Um, once again, though, the Golden State Warriors are completely healthy, so I could see these guys all just having pretty average games on a two-game slate, though. Could be enough to get you there. We saw Clay Thompson play 26 minutes last time out. Uh, that's kind of relevant, actually. You know, he's only been playing, you know, 22, 23. You add those four minutes, I know it sounds kind of like, oh, that's not that much. But for a Clay Thompson, that's a kind of a big deal. So I think Clay Thompson at 5'3". Uh, it seems like I sound like a broken record, but every single time we've had a two-game slate, Clay Thompson's been on it. And anytime we have a large slate, people ask about Clay Thompson, and it's just, he's not really worth going to because there's so many better options with bigger minutes upside in the spot. But on a two-game slate, where we don't have a ton of options. I mean, this is the time to play Clay Thompson and hope that he goes out there and gets hot from the three-point arc and puts up, you know, 40 DraftKings points at low ownership. So certainly don't hate going to get some Clay Thompson. An auto porter at 5-1 I do think is interesting. I believe Andre Iguodala is out in this game. Uh, as far as the latest update, yes, he is out. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, I do think that's going to load up some more minutes for an auto porter, uh, some more usage off the bench at a 5-1 price tag. So I think he's pretty interesting in our tournament lineup. He's expected to play in the mid-20s minutes, putting up 0.98 DK points per minute. Um, and those are the main guys I'm going to. You could go to a punt play in a B elites at 3-5. Once again, a less than ideal spot that he could get hot for you on a two-game slate. So I don't hate it. 32 points last time in 18 minutes. So that's just kind of goes to show you what the kind of upside he possesses. Uh, Jordan Poole at 5-4 off the bench. Once again, kind of the uh, sixth-man role where if he does get hot off the bench, it could pay off for you in your tournament. So if you want to go there, um, he really doesn't grade out as the best play on paper here. Kind of limited minutes, kind of limited usage. Clay Thompson's back, Steph Curry's back, but he's only 5'4". We've seen him playing, you know, mid-20s to low 30s in minutes, and he's been putting up right around 30 DraftKings points every game. So if you want to take your risk on that, I don't hate it.
Looking at FanDuel, we kind of already reviewed the slate, but we got to talk about the pricing discrepancies and all that stuff. I would say overall, from a game theory aspect and all that stuff, the, the sites are going to be pretty similar. I mean, Tyrese Maxey, Matisse Thibel at 5'8". We already talked about them over there on um, DraftKings. But once again, both these guys getting a lot of minutes. Both of them priced very cheaply. Both of them going to be, you know, top guys that I'm looking to on this slate tonight from a cheap aspect. You know, they're the same price tag as some of these other cheap guys that were risky minutes. We don't really know if they're going to get them. And we know these guys are going to play 30 plus minutes a piece. So it really makes a lot of sense to be getting some exposure to them from value aspect. Uh, the hands of Russell and Anthony Edwards, it's even easier to get them in over here. We talked about liking them on DraftKings, but uh, Anthony Edwards is even cheaper over here versus the 8-1 price tag. He's only 7-3. DeAndre Russell is only 7-2. So like the amount of minutes these guys are getting, for example, Clay Thompson's at 6-2. Do we really want to go to Clay Thompson at 6-2 when we have those guys for just a thousand more? He's going to play 25 minutes and these guys are going to play, you know, mid 30s to upper 30s. That's the exact thing that I'm kind of talking about that makes it tough on you with Clay Thompson based on the price tags on, you know, whatever website you're playing on. Clay will be lower owned. If Clay goes off and, you know, D'Angelo Russell only puts up 26 Fanduel points like he did last time, you could be in a really good spot. But I wouldn't anticipate that that happens again. So for me, those guys, really, really good plays over here on FanDuel. Um, Tobias Harris at 8-1, a very, very good play. Price in the mid-range, you know, kind of easy to be fitting in your lineups. We know the upside is going to be there for him. We talked about Furkan Korkmaz at 4-5 as well, especially if there's no Danny Green. So it seems as if these uh, these Philadelphia guys are probably going to get a lot of ownership. They're really greeting out as great plays because they're all priced very cheaply on both websites. You know, Kirk uh, Korkmaz, Ty Bull, um, Tyrese Maxey. We know there's no Seth Curry, no Shake Milton. So they're really greeting out some good options to be locking in your lineups to be you know able to pay up for these top pay-up options. And then a lot of the other guys on the FanDuel that we're looking to are going to be kind of priced in the mid-range for the most part. Um, who are some of those guys? Well, I mean, the guys that are getting lots of minutes priced in the mid-range, we have Andrew Wiggins at 6K. We talked about Otto Porter at 5'7". Um, we already talked about Anthony Edwards, Tobias Harris, obviously, the payup option, LeBron James. Like, a guy like Carmelo at 5'2 over here comes someone that's really kind of tough to be prioritizing, but for that reason could become really low-owned. So if you want to go there on a two-game slate, I don't hate it. Malik Beasley at 3'8". If there's no uh, Jalen Noel, we talked about him. We have Georgia Shenyang at 3'7", Danny Green at 3'6", Stanley Johnson at 3'6". Uh, once again, some punt plays that you could certainly be looking to on this slate tonight. So some riskier options, but the minutes are there. You can definitely be looking to them. So Stanley Johnson becomes a valid tournament play if you want to go to him. That is my overall breakdown of this slate overall tonight, guys. It's only a two-gamer, but kind of talk about some strategy, all the punt guys I'd be looking to, um, the pay-up options, all that fun stuff on both websites. And with all that being said... Before I let you guys go, got to give you my lock of the night. Before I do, if you haven't checked out the premium content, guys, check it out over here, patreon.com slash kjk underscore DFS. Check out the KJK DFS NBA premium package. You get access to the projections, NBA data sheet, player stats, team stats, play contacts, stats, core plays, all that fun stuff. And a huge thank you to all of my current premium content members, my Patreon members, Adub, Adam, Anthony, Anthony, Asaf, Brian, Cody, Josh, KPED, Michael, Michael, Mike, Patrick, Patrick, Renard, Smoothie, Tap My Life, Timothy, and Tucker. Thank you, all of you, for your support. Really do appreciate it. If you guys want to sign up for all that content and all of the other KJK fun stuff, that's linked below in the description. I got a merch store. I've got sponsor links. I've got um, the premium content. I've got my own DFS profile. If you want to see my biggest wins and how I've done in the past, it's all included down there. And the sponsor of the program, Super Jack Pro, guys. Check them out. Go over there. Sign up. Become a coach or a player today. Start winning some money over there. And with all that being said, got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be Tobias Harris. On this two-game slate, we talked about it a little bit, but raw scoring is really going to matter. And I think the pricing on Tobias Harris combined with the minutes and upside is the perfect storm for a two-gamer here. Going to get a lot of usage. We know it's going to be him and the Joel Embiid show here in the LA Lakers defense has not been good. And like I said, the price tag is just kind of the perfect storm on both websites here. Easy to be fitting in your laps in the mid-range, still giving you access to the top pay-up options in this slate tonight. Get him in your lineups because he is my lock of the night. So there we go, guys. Tobias Harris. Get him in your lineups. And that is all from me in this one. 
If you did enjoy the content, if you could please take a second to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload, that would be greatly appreciated. Wish you all the best of luck tonight. We will see you later on in the live stream, hopefully. And that's all for me, guys. Good luck. Peace.